just about 5,100 pounds on the nose. Gray Wolf 26RR half ton towable travel trailer toy hauler crossover here at Halo RV of Coldwater, Michigan. This thing is great for folks with half tons. I think it's really about the top size of where a lot of half ton toy hauling needs to be. And it's it's good for a lot of things. It's not good for like just hauling motorcycles. Like that's fine. It would work just fine for that. But Frankly, there's a lot of people like bicycles, kayaks, dog kennels. It, it It's kind of this interesting little in-betweener, which is why I sort of call it a crossover. Now what's kind of cool about the 26RR, this was really, like, you find a lot of trailers that are very similar to this in the RV industry. This was pretty much one of the first ones. The Grey Wolf was the, like, the family of RVs that kind of started this whole crossover eight foot wide segment. And I think it serves such an awesome purpose in the industry. And I think the popularity of them kind of, you know, indicates a lot of people agree. Because what's cool about this, it's just a normal camper. It just has a good looking normal interior. It doesn't look like some kind of... Uh, you know, blowtorch extreme sort of toy hauler situation, although I will admit the RV industry largely has gotten much, much better about that. But it kind of, you know, really it was the Cherokee series like the Wolfpack Cousins and the Grey Wolves here that sort of brought that home and made it a little more mainstream. But right here, what we're looking at, this is what kind of makes this floor plan work. It's this like multi-function Swiss Army <laughs> dinette sort of arrangement. Sitting here right now, what's great, is when the toys are unloaded if the whether the rear ramp is up or down it just has a nice functional living space and what's cool about this that is a dinette that could fit six adults so it's a good little couples camper but it is awesome awesome for entertaining family and friends and with that table being fully free floating if you want to have a little you know picnic al fresco or if you want to take it under the power patio awning or whatever works for you there's really no limitations saying what you can and can't do with it. And when you slide that table out of the way, you see you just got this kind of nice wide open, almost like a rear living room concept, but it's very social in the way that you have uh, inward seating here. But again, it's good for more than just couples. It actually has some pretty decent guest accommodations back here. This is the most obvious sleeping configuration I think most people come up with, and I think it's the most logical direct one. It creates the largest sleeping space there. And uh, what's kind of cool, I mean, you could easily sleep a couple adults on there, but you could also fit a couple kids on it pretty easily. However, what's kind of cool here is there's a little bit different way you can arrange this that I think works really good for buddy hunting, camping, or if you have a couple kids that you just want to keep separated at night. And I think this is probably the better way to use this as a sleeper. Um, it's not that the table can't take it, but it keeps the extra weight off the table that is kind of supporting the span uh, under those uh, hump cushions, <laughs> if you will. Maybe not necessarily the best phrasing, but <laughs> oh, that'll go with the highlight reel. You get the idea. So these side benches over here, they have their own little support legs under them. And I think this is... Uh, it, it's still two adult size sleepers, but it gives you that individual space uh, that I think a lot of people really enjoy on a camping trip. I know I tend to. Um, what's also kind of cool here, you don't have to put the table there. You don't have to put the little separation cushions in. You could just take those two little separator cushions, put them out of the way, and you could easily just bed down for the night on these things. There's, there's just... There's no one way to use these is kind of the point. It's whatever you feel like doing with them. Whatever works for you on your camping trip and maybe you use it different ways on different trips. But of course those benches fold up out of the way because at some point you're probably going to want to load some stuff into here. And that's what's cool about this one. Earlier we flashed a, uh, a copy of the floor plane with like a bunch of dimensions written on it. That'll have, I, I believe, the majority of questions answered. If there's other specific things you want measured, just contact our team here at Halo RV. Meet one of our folks. They'll walk out hand measure whatever you need, get your pictures of whatever you need. We're a service-based place, that's what we do. Now naturally, like all other gray wolves, but especially important on a toy hauler model, we're carpetless and ventless flooring. And what is nice is they're using recessed D-rings here um, in a class that has very often surface-mounted D-rings. And I don't think it's like a major, major ordeal. Where these are nicer is if you're walking and you step on it, it just doesn't quite zing your foot like you're stepping on a Lego, like some of those surface-mounted ones. You know, if you're just walking around barefoot or in socks in the morning, 
some of those things kind of sting. Now we're just going to kind of work our way around the trailer here. What is nice, it, actually, if I get down low, you can see that they're very good about putting lights under the overhead cabinets, especially over there in the kitchen. Um, more lighting is something that is uh, easily missed in a lot of trailers, especially since I think like over 90% of RVs are displayed at dealer's lots without power run to them. That's one of the things that we kind of pride ourselves on doing different here at Halet RV. Big campsite viewing window over here, and you've got this nice wide open space. Obviously the intention here is for loading space, but it's perfect if you want to bring a couple chairs or something inside, especially if you want to create your own little sort of home theater thing. If you choose to add a TV to the RV, you've got your bracket right there. And the same bracket can be found outside of the RV, just below that big window, and in the bedroom. So you can have one screen that serves a lot of different purposes, or you could actually just set up multiple screens in your RV, whatever works for you. And that's kind of the thing. This has a very scalable entertainment system. And that is just a, uh, a, a beautifully uh, high-def printed panel, but it sure does have a textured look to it. It does give it a nice three-dimensional shape and character. Now, what I mean by expandable entertainment is, again, you can put screens all over the place, but you gotta be able to feed the beast, you know? And that's what this thing is right here. It's a Bluetooth stereo, but it has HDMI plugs right there, so it's very streaming stick friendly with an open pocket right there should you choose to add some extra entertainment options. A little bit of storage right there. We'll see that open in a second, but a clutter-cutting shoe garage right by the door. Perfectly positioned uh, placement for that. Um, <laughs> practically perfect in every way, like Mary Poppins. Anyway, <laughs> wow, that's taking me back. So over here in the kitchen, at a glance, not much has changed, but there is a significant difference here. This RV now has about 67% uh, more cold storage capacity than it had years past with a 10.7 cubic foot 12 volt uh, DC compressor fridge. And what that means is that it operates on battery power, but it only draws about 3 amps. So if you're going to be off grid, you're going to be away from the parks um, and you have the uh, like a portable solar panel hooked up, which is giving you 9 or 10 amps. Obviously, that thing can operate indefinitely while giving us more cold storage that is always traveling friendly with like no limitations. You know, sometimes a propane fridge you'll have to turn off for this situation or that situation. This fridge you can operate anytime you want. You know, that's that's one of the cool things about it. Now up top in the kitchen, we have a skylight there for extra lighting uh, without burning up, uh, uh, you know, our electricity when we're dry camping. But it does have a shade if it's uh, really hot. Speaking of which, we also have central air if it's really hot, which is something not every trailer in this class and category offers. In a lot of cases, at the uh, this price point and this style of trailer, um, centralized air is actually still an optional piece of equipment, but you'll find that standard on every single Gray Wolf here at Halet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. Now, it's easy to miss, but it's important to note they're giving you a full-size overhead cabinet over here, and the way that you can tell that is the overhead cabinet is the same size and depth as the microwave. It doesn't sink back. It's not recessed. Full uh, real tile backsplash behind that stove top. And that is a tempered glass stove cover for those who aren't yet aware. I know that there's a lot of people who have seen these videos before, but this, there's also a lot of people. It's their first time visiting us here at Halet RV. Um, so, you know, it's a very impact and, and shatter resistant kind of glass top on that. It's, it's used all over the business. It wouldn't be used all over the business if it wasn't getting the job done. Now, all of our countertops, even uh, the countertop on the uh, entertainment center or that tabletop that we saw on that free-floating table, it's a sealed edge pressed membrane. And that's thankfully become more common in the industry. But brands like Catalina, who was really the first to standardize it, and then uh, Cherokee later here, um, they were way ahead of the curve on that. And there's still a lot of brands that don't do it as consistently. Now, you can see here... What is, th this is very easily, I think, misconstrued as a starter class camper. I think of it as a smarter class camper because it has an impressive equipment package given the price point we're looking at. Like that high rise sprayer faucet and that beautiful black stainless sink right there. Now I've got the sink cover out of the way so you can see down into that farm sink, but you can also see how the corners of this have little nubs, little slots on them, so that uh, countertop doesn't, you know, fall off in transit. Place for a wastebasket or soaps or whatever down there below the sink, and a pair of big drawers instead of uh, one or two small drawers means things like flashlights or uh, spatulas or grill lighters, they aren't as inclined to get stuck up and gummed up in there. They're just easier to uh, to deal with. Now, if I take one quick step back, obviously this bench can fold up out of the way as just like the other one. I just kind of have one up, one down to give you the idea. But you've got these 
uh, air vents right here. These are two-way air vents because if you're loading something that has an internal combustion engine, there's going to be a measure of exhaust. And you don't want that in your RV, smelling up your RV. So what you can do is leave those open in transit to make sure that this thing gets fully, like aggressively, forcefully aired out. And as I said, we would come back and take a uh, another look at the little storage right here by the entertainment center. I call that a little bit of pantry-tainment storage right there. Now as we pass into the bathroom, there's a neat new feature on these that's, again, very easily gone unnoticed without power. I've got the lights off right now. And previously in generations of Grey Wolf campers, you had to go through and click those lights individually, which wasn't the hardest thing in the world, but they now have a handy little motion sensor, so the bathroom lights are effectively automatic. Now you can still individually turn them on and off, you just don't have to. And they've got about a one minute timer, so it's not like it's gonna drain your battery if you walk away from them. It's sort of like a little motion sensitive light switch you can have in house. Actually, it's very similar to that. Good linen space and, and space for your toiletries and whatnot in here. Notice that they're still using a Max Air fan. That is one of those things that in this class and category you don't find a lot of. And that is the reason these doors are slotted. You're not gonna lose any privacy because the slot's up too high to smash your face against the ceiling to be able to see anything. But the fact is, uh, all the heat that we exude when we're cooking, when we exist, when we breathe, it will all float up. And then if you kick that fan on, it'll pull it right out of all the rooms. That's the thing, it's basically like a whole house fan. And it gives us some really good airflow. You can see they're using a, uh, a nice glass enclosed radius shower. And the uh, shower surround protective paneling on that goes all the way up to the ceiling. A large adult sink and a large adult vanity and medicine cabinet kind of finish the thing off. And that's that, those are just handy features. It's not just a mirror glued against the wall. It's not one of those little tiny kitty sinks. It's something that you can actually get into and use. And our bedroom up here, as a result, is very, very private since we have that full walk-through middle bathroom right there. Good lighting in here and obviously that uh, the beautiful color palette. I love what they're doing. Now, it's not a big room, but it doesn't feel small because of the combination of big windows and the mirrors on those full-length hanging wardrobe closets so that you don't have a sharp edge to stab you in the corner. Additionally, both sides of the bed have household and USB plugs, so no matter what you're trying to power up in here, you're going to be good to go. And you might be wondering, what is that big black rectangle next to that household outlet over there? It's actually a Bluetooth speaker mount uh, for a specific Furion Bluetooth speaker, but it still has a pair of USB plugs, so chances are 99.9% .9 of everybody is just going to use it as a normal USB hub. And once again, you've got a uh, TV bracket here in the bedroom that matches what we saw in the living room and matches what we will see in just a moment outside. Now, kind of like the motion lighting in the bathroom, what I want to focus on out here are things that are easily missed and not obvious. Like, okay, power awning, power tongue jack, that, that stuff, it's... I'm not going to tell you it's 100% across the board in the industry, but it feels like it's darn close nowadays. So I don't want to waste a bunch of time talking about same, same features. I want to talk about things like a custom engineered chassis. That's the kind of stuff that the average first time owner wouldn't even have a clue about, but it's a really key portion of what makes this trailer work very well. It's a sneaky, sneaky feature, actually. The uh, chassis is actually designed where the tongue integrates into the A-frame. If you notice down here, you can see how the, uh, the front uh, actually goes right into the chassis, and I think I phrased that wrong. The tongue integrates into the chassis. The A-frame integrates into the chassis. Whereas right here, you see how the chassis is actually on top of that. So why does this matter? Why am I wasting so much time talking about it? Well, when it does that, you have a standard height interior trailer that now has a reduced exterior height, so it's easier to store, easier to tow, lower center of gravity, and a really key feature on a toy hauler, a lower floor deck height as compared to the ground outside. Logically, if this thing is now six inches lower to the ground, then it is an easier angle of attack for that ramp door in the back when you're trying to load your stuff. And I don't care if it's not a motorcycle or an ATV, even if you're walking up and down that thing with a kayak or a bicycle, it's a easier transition, it's easier to get to. Now you have front and uh, rear stabilizer jacks here. That's the kind of thing that actually you need to watch out for on some of these entry level crossover toy haulers. 
they will sometimes be missed. And the thing that we like to do on our gray wolves here is we like to enclose the holding tank section of the underbelly so that uh, you just get that little bit of extra protection, whether it's from critters or weather or whatever. Now you've got a switch for your awning lighting, but you have a separate switch for the uh, docking station light over here. And it's a nice bright white LED. So if you have to get out here, use your outside shower, black tank flush, you know, uh, take care of your sewer tanky type stuff. You can see what you're doing and then shut the light off so you're not bothering the neighbor. Nobody wants to deal with that. Neat little thing on these mag wheels here too is there are tire pressure indicators on the valve stems. Basically, if you just glance and you see that thing flips from green to red, there you go. That's all you need to know. You just got to put some air in that tire. And that's a, a handy thing you don't have to worry about anymore. You don't have to constantly go around and be tire thumping and whatever else. Um, and outside storage here. You've got a nice chunk of outside storage on the other side of the RV that we're going to see but it kind of feels like it's designated for campsite stuff. It's not really friendly for like a toad of sewer type stuff. You could do that with it. It wouldn't hurt anything, I suppose, but now you don't have to because they include a handy little uh, bumper caddy there. Well, not bumper caddy, but a caddy in place of the bumper since this doesn't have a rear bumper since the rear toy hauler door kind of, you know, fights against that. Now, I often, we'll, we'll take a look at the patio deck option on this in just a minute, but I wanted to get a look at this with the door up because I don't know that I do that enough. And you can see it's a full width door. Additionally, uh, it's spring loaded and has nice locking cam bars. It's not just a, a metal sort of rollover that you have to use a padlock on. This has its own lock. It's also uh, self grasping. You have to basically manually disengage it and then it helps compress the seal to make sure we're not getting any sort of water intrusion, which is a really fancy flowery way to say leak. And that is obviously the biggest thing nobody wants in their RV. These things had been popular, but a couple years ago when Grey Wolf standardized that rear ramp patio deck, they just, just took off like a rocket. And it's, it's not a surprise. It's a feature that a lot of people really enjoy. It expands your living space a lot. And actually, I think it's uh, a great spot if you got a couple little folding chairs. You could almost turn this thing into something of an interesting rear living room. You know, a neat little social gathering spot on the back. Um, above the rear area there, you can see that you have your backup camera prep right below that really aggressive flood load light. That's something that they kind of borrowed from their wolf pack cousins over at Cherokee right there. So that if you're loading up in the morning or night, you can see what you're doing. Now, the leash latch over here kind of indicates, you know, for pet use. And I think that is a good use for it, for sure. But I think it's also a neat way that you could kind of make sure some things like some bicycles, some coolers, they don't go wandering off your campsite, you know? If you step away for a little while, there's, there's more uses that than, than just pets. Our power awning over here has a two finger easy tilt awning with literally just two fingers. You can adjust the tilt on that awning and you can uh, get yourself some decent rainy day runoff or maybe just kind of angle the shade a little bit better, although it has an auto rain dump feature as well. Uh, lighting below the awning and little accent lights within the speakers right on either side of that big campsite viewing window. and that's. One of those awesome features of this trailer too. It actually gives you a good look of your sight and what you're doing, although the view off that rear patio is always pretty stellar. We've got an anti-slam door. I left it sticking wide open because you can leave it sticking wide open. You might notice Mr. Jody inside doing some quality control. He's become kind of a guest star in a lot of our videos here. We proactively check every single RV that comes in here at Halet RV. You can see it's still hooked up to the delivery driver's truck. We are proactive, not reactive in our quality control so that we can make sure that you're getting a good product and we're putting a good product out the door here. So you saw the anti-slam door, bigger handle, and the Moride stable steps. Actually, Cherokee was the uh, first trailer in this class and category to standardize those stable steps. And since then, it's like almost everybody has just jumped on that bandwagon. Now, next to our uh, front uh, storage compartment, you've got solar prep for a little portable solar panel and a little grill plug down below. And would you know it, you've got yourself a big compartment here where if you wanna bring exactly those things or just about anything else along, you've got plenty of space for it. So if you like what you see, give us a call. We do it all at Halet RV with the exception of hidden dealer fees. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping everyone.